Hey everybody, welcome to my third of three videos on this, the Bronica S2A. And in this video, I'm going off script and I'm gonna ad lib just about the lens mount because I think it's one of the neatest things about this camera because when the camera was designed, the lens mount was designed to enhance creativity. So a lot of people think it's really wonky and I, I agree with this in that it's got a smaller internal bayonet for the lenses and many, many lenses fit in here. Do I have many lenses? I don't have many lenses that fit in here. I have more lenses that don't fit in here than that do. Um, to mount it, you've got a red dot and a red dot, right? So you can just, there we go, swap between them. And then you have a larger bayonet here, which is the focusing helical most of the time. There's also a leaf shutter lens here. Uh, the leaf shutter function on this doesn't work, but it just goes right into there and just um, functions as a standard lens, at least this one does, without a working leaf shutter. The lenses that required a deeper throat, you could remove this and all of this excess width could then be reclaimed for lens optics and mechanics. Also, there were some telephoto lenses that used this deeper throat. This is one of them. This is a 25 centimeter F4 Nikkor. It mounts somehow. There it is. There's the red dot. There we go. And the telephotos used the large bayonet. They had their own mount where you could take the back of it off. There we go. So you would only need one of these to have multiple Nikkor telephotos. Um, if you buy one of these Nikkor telephotos like this, these are not easy to find. If it doesn't have this silver ring at the back, it's not gonna mount onto your camera without finding one of these, and these are really difficult to find. Uh, these old telephotos were underperformers. So one of the things you can do if you have one of these is put some felt, let me get you a better view of that, inside right around in here and then on these lips to help cut down on the glare and improve contrast. Um, these old Nikkor telephotos need as much help as you can give them. Bronica didn't make a whole lot of their lenses at the time that this camera was made. So, for instance, I forget who makes the 80mm 2.4. I want to say it was, it was either Cosina or Topcon. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But many of their lenses were made by different makers. So they had varying quality, but they were all generally really good. One of the makers who made a lot of lenses was Komura, and they had a system that used the, the large bayonet with a focusing helical that would pop in like this. And I'm gonna show you something about this focusing helical right now. You can see that those numbers are white corresponding up here to F5 300. We'll turn them here to correspond with F7 500. And here, now orange, to correspond with F6 400. So this one focusing helical would go into the camera and then you would grab the F5 300 lens and at some point the threads would catch. There we go. 
And now you have a 300 millimeter telephoto lens with a minimum focus distance of around eight feet, uh, which is pretty great uh, for a lens this size of this, this focal length of this age. It's a preset lens, which means that what you do is this first ring here sets the aperture that you can stop down to. The second ring actually stops it down. So when you go to pay, take a picture, you focus wide open. You, have, you know you're gonna shoot at whatever aperture you wanna set it to. And then right before you hit the, the shutter release, you just stop it down. So I'll show you what that looks like. And there we go. So when you're wide open, this is what it looks like. I'm, and I have the preset lens set to f32. So if I wanted to stop down to f32. And for those of you who are lens nuts out there, let's just take a look at that aperture one more time. Yep. It is as close to perfectly circular as apertures get for the entire range. Um, these Comura lenses for Bronica were really spectacular performers. If you have just the one of them, then uh, you know, by all means, just leave it in there. But if you have two, what you can do is unscrew one and then screw the other in. There we go. And then all you need to do is adjust this, oops, wrong way, to the correct set of focusing scales and now you can use this lens instead. This is the 500 F7. This is not a preset lens, but we can still see what the aperture looks like stopped down. And again, pretty darn close to circular the whole way to f45. Uh, it is very soft at f45, I can tell you that uh, for sure. And then it has a you know, closest focusing distance. It's again the same throw here of about 25 feet, 26 feet in that range. So I only point all this out because this is a big lens, right? That's another big lens. But together, all three parts of these take up less space in a camera bag than two of these lenses by themselves. So this right here, you only needed one of these and you could have all three of the front elements. And you had three telephoto lenses, up to three telephoto lenses in a much smaller, more lighter weight package than if all these three lenses had this built into it. It's an incredibly innovative and clever idea that um, I just don't know of anything similar to that in another system. There are two other quick things that we wanna go over here with lenses for this system. This first one uses this focusing helical. So we're gonna put this back in. I mentioned a couple of times in the last video that you can use leaf shutter lenses in this camera. If my fingers will let me get the rear lens off here. There we go. So this is a 165 millimeter F63 Calumet, right? It's a great, great lens, really sharp. And it just screws into this 57 millimeter thread ring right here because coincidentally, the um, interchangeable mount macro tubes available on eBay are um, 57 millimeter thread. There we go, you can see that. You will need to line these with black felt because they are way too shiny inside to prevent reflections from one of these lenses. So this does a lot to help improve your image quality. Just screws right into there. And all you need to do is get a 
few of these and then play around with them until you get to infinity focus. Uh, this is what's on there, and it's a 57 millimeter. And this one's a 34.6 millimeter opening. I forget which Copal shutter size that is. This one's a 41.6 opening. So this is the most expensive part of the whole lot to, to get this, but then you can put different large format lenses on, pop open the lens leaves. If you're just gonna shoot normally, you can just focus and adjust your aperture, which admittedly is a little bit tricky to do on this particular lens. But adjust your aperture and then just take your photo whenever you're ready. If you wanted to shoot a flash, get everything ready, there you go. And you can use a flash. And you can use a flash as fast as the fastest shutter speed on these leaf lenses, which is really ridiculously nice. So, and then however much focus you get is based on the focal length of the lens. This is 101 millimeters here, 101.7 millimeters from film plane to focus. So you're not gonna be able to put a 90 millimeter lens on here and get infinity focus. But you could put something like 110 or 165 or longer if you wanted to. There's one other innovative thing that went on with these cameras. This is Zeiss made some, I think it's 80 millimeter or 75 millimeter f2.8 standard lenses, but they did not make a 55 millimeter f4 flectagon. So what we have here has been a, a huge mystery, and I've done some digging around, gone into the internet wayback machine and things like that, looked at the uh, old web archive, and it turns out that there, in East Germany, there was a shop that would take flectagons for the practica mount, and then disassemble them and put the flectagon into a Bronica mount. Everything works exactly like it should. This is a, a giveaway that something's fishy because this button's much different than anything on a Bronica um, or made specifically for Bronica. But everything works. In fact, they did this with the Flectagon F4, the 120 F2.8, and then a third lens I'm blanking on were, were, were a standard. But they didn't do that many of them. And of course, being a, a flectagon, it performs exactly like you might imagine a flectagon does and adds an interesting depth to this. So that is probably more than anyone would ever want to know about Bronica S2A lenses. It's a system that is innovative and allowed a lot of people to be creative and to create really neat things, including even really basic meniscus lenses that could be mounted in here and uh, used for very simple and exciting photography, quite honestly, with weird meniscus housings. I did that for a while. I don't know where that one's gone to. Anyway, if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up, or if not helpful, at least interesting. You know, that's kind of all I was going for was interesting with this. Um, if you have any comments about any of the lenses you saw or questions or anything like that, um, Please leave a comment. I'm pretty good about responding to those fairly quickly. And uh, other than that, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next week or in the next camera manual.